data can come via a whole bunch of formats and chances are that you might not like the format that the data comes in. For example, I recently had the problem that the data I needed for my analysis didn't come via a text file or some CSV file or some Excel file. Instead, all I had was some website that I could access through my web browser but not from women are. So what I had to do was to copy and paste all of that stuff from that website, throw that into a text file manually, and then extract all of the things that I needed for my analysis through a bit of text cleaning using the string R package and R. And today I'm going to show you how that works so that you can apply the same tricks in case you ever need it. In case you don't know me, my name is Albert Rapp. I am a mathematician and data scientist and on this channel, I help our users with typical data science tasks like text cleaning. So today we're going to do that. Let's check out how that works. All right, let's start to look at our data source first. Here we have an HTML website that shows you some employee roster and it's all interactive where you have to drill down into all of these things to see who works where. And if we unfold all of these things, then a really low tech and simple thing you can do is to just copy and paste all of this stuff into a text file. So once you have that copied, then you move to our studio where you create a text file. I already have one here. So this is why I just use this empty file here. Otherwise you can just go on new file, new text file, and then name it something. In this case, I named it employees.txt. As I've said, just a simple text file. And then after you have copied the stuff from the previous page, you can just paste this stuff in here and you have all of the information inside of this text file. I know that this isn't pretty, but sometimes you don't really find another way to get to your data really quickly. So this kind of stupid low tech version of having to find out how to work with that is oftentimes the only way to move forward. In a quarter file, you can now load the tidyverse. Let's do that here. And then we can use the read lines function where we load the data. Here I just have to move to my directory that I called collab. It's supposed to be collapsible, but I guess I misspelled it. So it's just co collapsible list. And in there we have the employees txt file. And now if you load this, let me minimize this here, then you do have all of the information that you need. So with this information, you can just take this thing and throw this into a table. Let's call this lines and in there, you now have a data set that has one row for every line that you have seen in our txt file. Apparently the structure of our file is always department, team and sub team. And here all of these things are denoted by the words department, team and sub team. But in a real world scenario, it might not be as easy as that. Sometimes you might have to figure out some other thing to identify what are the sub organizations or what is the real smallest unit that you want to look at. For example, even in this kind of scenario, you might have to use some IDs that are mentioned here. You can see here that the ID structure reflects the structure that we have. So every department, it's just called A, has a team. That's why all the teams are called A1, A2, and so on. Here's the A2 team. And within a team, there's a sub team. So that's why it's called A1.1. So in a lot of scenarios, you can find some other identifier to figure out what is the hierarchical structure that you want to look at. But in our case, we can just use the easy things like department, team and sub team, and then just throw this to mutate where we can extract these things. So we want to extract the department. Let's just leave some room there. We want to extract the team and we also want to extract the sub team. And the idea to make this work is always the same in all three of these cases, we're going to use the str extract function. So we're going to use str extract, and then we just target the lines column that we have. It's the only column we have right now, so there's nothing else to target. And then we have to specify a pattern that we're looking for. In our case, we're looking for department, spell it correctly, followed by a white space, and then followed by some letter. So here I will just put in a dot, which is regular expression for just any arbitrary character. If we want to be really specific, we could even just go with capital letters from A to Z. And this part here, this is the thing that I want to extract. So I can put this into parentheses here. And if I comment out these things, 
for a second. And if I execute this, we do see here that this department column was created. And when we had a department, this thing was actually matched. But I don't want to have this department word in front of all the things that I have in that column. I only want to have the letter A in there. So that's why inside of str extract, let's just make some room here. There you can set another argument. If you look into the documentation, you will see that there is an argument called group. And if you scroll down, you can see that you can set this to true to return only the match text from the specified capturing group. And guess what? These parentheses, they define capturing groups in using regular expressions. So let's set group to true. Now if we execute this and we minimize the documentation, then we see here only A is extracted. So that's neat. And we can more or less proceed in the exact same way with the other columns. So for team and subteam, we can do the exact same thing. Let me just copy and paste this part here. And then we want to do the same thing for team and the same thing for subteam. And we can get rid of this part here. And then we know in this case, we're looking for team followed by a capital letter followed by some number. Let's just assume that the numbers are always just a single digit from one to nine. And then for the sub team, we can do the exact same thing. Let's just copy this part here because it's also part of the ID. But here we need to use the sub team word. And here it's the A or B or C or whatever, then followed by a single digit, followed by a dot. But this time we mean a literal dot and not the regular expression dot that it says any character that you can think of. So that's why we have to escape this thing using these escaping backslashes. And then we can say, okay, once again, we do have a single digit here. And now if we execute this, we do see that we always get these matches here. All right, so now we have all of the information about the department, team, and sub-team things in here. Now let's try to fill up these empty NA values by just filling downwards. So so if I just use this data set here and then I just print it to show all of the lines, I do want to have the department column filled with A's all the way down to B. And then it's just B's again. And the same thing should happen with A1 and A2. And for that, there is the fill function. In there, you just specify the columns that you want to fill. In this case, we want to fill all the columns from department to sub team. And now let me just print all of the rows again, you do see here now that everything was filled for us. Sweet. This means that we can concentrate on the actual rows that only have the employees inside of it. We don't need the information about the structure that we had in our TXT files from before. Remember, this part came from this HTML web page that had the structure here with the collapsible folds. Since we don't need that anymore because we have that in these columns, let's filter this out. So let's just Row all of this to filter, pass this to this print function so that we see all of the rows again. And then we just have to filter out all of the rows where there literally is the word department, team, or sub team in it. So let's just use the str detect function to do exactly that. We want to target the lines column. And in there, we just say, okay, we're looking for department, or we're looking for team or we're looking for sub team. Let's just throw all of this in here. And we use these vertical lines to use the regular expression notation to say either this group or this group or this group. And now if we execute this, we see here that we have all of the rows that fulfill the specific criterion. And if we want to have the opposite, we can just say, okay, str detect, please negate the results. So let's just throw in negate is true. And that way, we make some more room here because this isn't nice legible code. Let's just throw everything onto one new line. Now we see that we have all of the employees and we didn't lose any information because the information about department, team, and sub team, it's all just inside of these columns in here. Perfect. Now the remaining thing that needs to be done is to just use the exact same strategy that we have used here and extract the IDs of these employees and then we can just delete everything that comes after the names. So let's just go with a new hate call. And in there we use the same logic as before. We target the lines column. So here we can just look for the word ID followed by a colon followed by a white space. And then the digits that come after that are our ID. Let's just throw this in here. 
of course we don't want to name this department we want to name this id and in here we say okay we're looking for digits it's this time it can be a zero as well so let's go from zero to nine and since we don't only have one digit but maybe multiples we could just put in a plus or since we in our case know we're always looking for exactly four digits let's just throw the regular expression notation for saying of these things look for exactly four and now if we execute this and throw this to print then we see that we get an error it says subscript out of bounds and this is because we didn't define a group now if we define a group things actually work out so with that inside of the lines column we could remove these ids here because we have that in a new column already so let's use another function from the string r package for removal so let's target the lines column and on that we'll use the str remove function there we target the lines column and remove everything that matches the pattern that we have seen here so throwing the exact same thing in there we notice that okay we didn't get enough we wanted to have a white space minus and white space we should get rid of that too so let's just throw this into our pattern here as well so that's neat we now have a data set where we have names in it the column name right now isn't great we should change that in a second and then we have the information about department team sub team and id so i could just rename this column name into name but i kind of want to show you something different which is also really neat namely a separate function so let's just go with separate and then we use the separate wider thing because we want to separate the things that are currently in the lines column into two columns which means we make this whole thing wider but that's why we know that we want to use a wider call and here we want to specify that we want to separate by something that delimits the thing that we want to split into here a perfect candidate for that is a white space so we can always use first name and last name as the things that we split into so let's just check the documentation it says we need to specify the columns okay i want to target the lines column and my delimiter is a simple white space once again in this easy scenario it really works well if someone had multiple first names then things might become more tricky but here just to get used to this separate wider delimit function it's nice to just look at this easy example and then we have to specify the names that we want to map to so let's come up with new column names a vector of length two is what we need so that's why we'll just go with name and last name name and then last name and then if we throw this to print then we see that we now have successfully split up our data into two columns here and with that we have fully taken our collapsible employee roster that we only found online and didn't really have a nice database for this that we could access instead we have taken this thrown this into a txt file and now we have a nice employee roster that we could work in from within R. If you enjoyed this video, I am very certain that you're going to enjoy my data cleaning masterclass where I show you a whole lot more tricks like this, whether it is about productivity tricks or reading in a whole bunch of files into R or X cleaning like that. The data cleaning masterclass has something for you. So if you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely love the course. You can check it out by following this link here. Or if you're interested in learning more about data cleaning, then you can also check out this free video next where I show you the basics of data cleaning. So all that's left to do is to say thank you for watching and I will see you next time.